Hey, good day YouTube. It's Jeffrey House Carpet Cleaning. We're coming today uh, from a church in the area. We do some uh, seasonal carpet cleaning almost every year here. So um, what we're going to be doing, let me walk you through what we're going to be doing real quick. Um, we're going to be doing a bonnet cleaning in here because as you can see that there's coffee and stuff all over in here and then in the main fellowship hall here. This is where the, the kids play games and they eat you know, they meet fellowship room here after church services and everything. So we've got tape residue and spill or something. No one will fess up to what it actually is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It looks like, I don't know. I know that there, at one point we took a bunch of tape residue off of that area. Now it just looks really bad. But we're going to be using commercial magic today. And getting up all the, the little coffee spots, you know, you've got chocolate or cake or coffee or something there. Take a quick look around. You know, we're going to be um, boosting our commercial magic with peroxide. And peroxide takes care of, you know, all coffee for the most part. So, um... It is some uh, pH is between 11 and 12, I believe, on the, the commercial magic. Not what does it say? 11 and 12 pH, approximate pH down here. Dilution of 1 to 3 or 1 to 32. So it's very um, highly concentrated. So it goes a long ways. So, and then we are going to boost the commercial magic. Actually, it's not really boosting it, I guess. We're just giving it some more properties by adding peroxide to it, which is the detonator portion of the Vacoys Blast blend. So um, the one thing that's very cool about um, Vacoy is that their products are designed to mix and match and blend and basically with the VacWave product line, you pretty much have a chemistry set at your disposal where you can be mixing and matching products to develop a custom product based upon its, you know, exact need of what you're needing here. So, the commercial magic being that it's, um, we're dealing with, um, a, a plastic synthetic carpet of some sort. Um, it is about 35 five years old or so and there is coffee all over the place so um high ph product but not too high you know and i don't like some people like oh yeah 13 ph um i kind of reserve that stuff for for really bad greasy restaurants um the stuff is biodegradable and self-neutralizing so it doesn't necessarily require a super good fiber rinse because it is self neutralizing on its own it's crystallizing it's basically your encapsulation but what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a good scrub we're not going to go ahead and do the you know um suppose you could pad clean it it would be absolutely fine but what we're going to do is um it feels like it's on it's on concrete and it's well heated so there won't be any drying issues so we're going to scrub the room and then we'll fire up the truck and then we'll give it a quick rinse um, using probably about 200 psi as we did in some previous jobs is like once you do the soil suspension um and that's what our 175 is for and i got to reattach our our solution tank because i had to replace the the guts on the inside as far as the the plunger assembly goes um, just haven't got it reattached but it, you know it's only a couple bolts and it's back on so um, we're going to go ahead and get started and get this place cleaned up you guys here's an FYI tip that I've been using and it works really good the commercial magic is super thick it's like a it's almost like a gel um, it comes out in, in these big globs like if you're dumping out a can of cream of chicken or something But you can you can solidify it if you can submerge the bottle in, in like a, a sink of warm water and That's what I'm doing here 
The other trick that you can do if you're, you are using the globs as it comes, you know, gooping out, is that you can put, let's say, 10 ounces of water in here, and then you just watch the water level rise as you're you're pouring the uh, the product in there. So when the water gets gets displaced by, this is like basically four to one to two ounces per gallon. So when you see the water level rise to you know one or two ounces or whatever you're trying to, so I make it at uh, two gallons at a time. So I put roughly in four ounces of this stuff for you know heavy duty cleaning that we're going to be doing. Not super heavy duty, but a lot of uh, you know food elements in the carpet. So I just do four to or two per gallon just to be safe. And this stuff goes a long, long way. So um. I just watch the water level rise up, you know, four ounces, so go two to 14 ounces of water, and when I see it hit that mark, I know that I've got enough uh, cleaning product in there. So uh, those are a couple of tips that you can use while you're cleaning. So you can either solidify it or just, you know, watch the, uh, go by the water level raise in the, on the measuring cup. Okay. I like doing things in quadrants and breaking things into to pieces. Um, part of it is I wanted to see how far the, the commercial magic would actually go. Um, pretty much went from, from that light socket there, it went from here all the way across. And then from the, the doorway here, or so we pretty much went all the way down here. So, you can see the contrast and it did a really good job of picking up all the coffee because you can see coffee everywhere well we haven't cleaned yet yet um in this area here we did go over real quickly it seemed to uh to, to pull all that coffee up or at least you know neutralize it and and, and cause it to suspend so that when we do our uh, our final steam cleaning it'll just lift all that stuff right out. Um, however you can see a lot of uh, it's probably from the plunger I'm having issues with the plunger on the 175 so you, you do see a little bit of pooling there but once we steam it all out it'll all dry evenly or just go over it a couple more times with just up the pad and that will help to, to even it out. We're not doing pad cleaning so we're not using the pads to absorb anything. We're just using it for agitation and scrubbing with a, a 10 inch or a, a 17 inch red pad. And that one is pretty well used. Um, typically I don't run them that long but in this case in scenario we're only using it for agitation purposes so it doesn't really matter that it's dirty however it's probably not as aggressive as it needs to be so I'll probably change it out here real soon but for now we're just uh, let's see we came down I'll probably just finish this pattern out all the way down to the end and then once we get the whole place all scrubbed we'll go ahead and fire up our truck and begin um, just kind of you know doing a quick rinse like again like I said 200 psi should be more than sufficient because we're just doing a quick you know go over making sure all the coffee spots are out and and all that so it's not even totally necessary um, in the past we did just pad clean this but I think to get you know sufficiently deal with all the coffee that's everywhere I, I feel that uh, a little bit of a hybrid approach is far more thorough um, but that's my opinion because I have access to both low moisture cleaning and hot water extraction a lot of times it's either one or the other so it kind of creates this dichotomy of which method is better when in essence neither method is better they both have their time and place and you just as a professional it's your job to pick and choose which is the right you know method um, if I were you know uh, in a place like I was last night and you had wood floor under the carpeting then um, you want to use as much or as least amount of moisture as you possibly can to, for cleaning because you don't want to get the 
the subfloor wet or damp or possibly causing uh, water damage issues for the, the guy down below you. So you got to be real careful in those situations. And here, I believe it, it's just on concrete. and there shouldn't be any issues in here whatsoever and um, a lot of heat ventilation here so it's not it's going to dry very quickly and there won't be any problems so always have a rhyme and a reason for everything you do um, make sure that you you calculate it out it makes sense it makes you have a reason you know so yeah and i'm rambling on and on and on Okay, so we're almost to a big chocolate spot, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do it now just to get it on camera, because it looks kind of cool um, seeing spots like this just kind of obliterate. Now, this is the Commercial Magic by Backaway, and we did um, put in peroxide. How much peroxide? We went by the uh, amount dosage on the bottle, so we did approximately four ounces per gallon on the bottle says to do five ounces per gallon but we're using it to boost our or at least add extra per, extra properties to our commercial magic so and it's already high ph so we're not necessarily needing to do 50 50 as what it's intended for but we're just using it to kind of just add more properties to the commercial magic so we didn't go the the whole the whole dose um however if i was mixing up a uh, a trigger sprayer i would go the whole dose just so that it, it's super strong maybe even more than full dose so it's twice or three times as strong and use that as like a super spotter and it works very well in that way so I'm going to go ahead and douse this area pretty good with our solution tank with those 175 and get that a scrub and show you guys what we are able to do here. All right, so this spot is pretty thick. I mean, it's got a bunch of stuff caked on there, so um, it's probably it's definitely going to need to be rinsed because it's not just, it might eventually just scrub off, but um, there's probably layers of stuff in there. And the next spot of interest that we're going to go over is this tape residue stuff that uh, they put down for games and stuff for the youth that are they're playing in here. So uh, we'll go ahead and go over that and see how the commercial magic works on that. Okay, guys, check this out. This is pretty cool. This is what the commercial magic did. It pretty much obliterated everything along here. What you see there is that the carpet is kind of rolled up. But, and I don't know how, why well, I suppose you had a power stretcher since the seam is here, it could be stretched out, but that goes beyond what we're doing. So, um, this is all the residue, and the reason I know it's clean because it picked up all the residue that was along here, and so what we're seeing there is just shadows caused by the rolling effect there, but all the residue is out. Um, I'm going to go over this cake again, chocolate, whatever. I have a feeling that that has to be rinsed. I don't think a, a pad is going to get that out and I'm finished scrubbing. It's probably just going to keep grinding it into the carpet. So, um, But, you know, you put enough solution on there, it will just eat away at that, that grime that's in there. And then the rest of the place, you can see that it's turning out really nice. So. We'll hit up the rest of the area here. We probably hit, what is this, maybe 75% of the room so far. And so we'll we'll go ahead and finish up. We'll come down here, and then we'll just make our way back to the wall there. And then the whole area will have been covered. And, yeah, I think they want the entryway done, too. I believe I saw a bit of coffee. Yeah, there's coffee here. There's coffee all over, so... We'll get this area all cleaned up to the door. All right, you guys, our first leg work of the job here is complete. I'm gonna take lunch as soon as uh, the gentleman gets back, maintenance guy who's been working here all day. I uh, don't wanna leave the place empty.
But anyways, we went through and we commercial magic the whole carpets. And as you can see, there are it's pretty blocky because where it's extra wet, like there, you know, you kind of see circles and rings and stuff. That's where we use extra solution to like scrub out coffee or something. But as you can see, there are there's really no coffee stains remaining. Um, Got to rinse this guy out, but about 75 to 80 percent already just got annihilated with the commercial magic so it's just a little bit of probably residue and stuff in the carpet there possibly give it a rinse and hopefully it'll just come right out now in Italy somebody is going to ask and I hope this this helps you guys out a little bit if you're starting out why did I use a 175 in here and not a CRB because a CRB you know, would have done the exact same thing, especially the some of those other units that have like the little sprayer. Some CRBs have like a little, you know, a, a tank with a sprayer. It sprays out ahead of them, so it, it basically is working like a 175. Kind of a little bit of a hybrid kind of approach, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, um, the reason I would not even entertain the ideas because it goes back to uh, picking the right tool for the job. Both of them would work. If you had the right brushes on a CRB, it would have worked absolutely fine in here and would have produced the exact same results. However, a 175, the way that it you use it, it swings you know basically back and forth and you have a lot more further, faster movement with it. So you are able to cover a lot more ground with it in the same amount of time. So with the 175, you, you're pushing two to 3,000 square feet of carpeting per hour. So this, this was probably roughly an hour, you know, to go do all this entire room and to go out into the foyer out there to the front door. Um, and that was also um, stopping to, there's a, we might need to work a little bit. This is like the only couple spots that I could see because I went over the whole area looking at it a couple times just to make sure we got all the coffee spots out of it. So this was about an hour or so and we did a very, an extremely heavy thorough scrub of everything. I mean you saw the before pictures or images coming in here with the video. I mean it was pretty hammered with uh, coffee spills all over the place and right now looking across the floor I mean that looks pretty sweet especially when it dries and gets all those those rings out of there from where there's extra moisture but we're going to go one step further and we're going to run our lines from the truck up here and we're going to give it a quick steam I'm thinking about 200 psi I think 200 psi should be fine give it a, a quick rinse I want to go over it real fast um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I really don't want the the carpets to get wet really at all I just want to give it a just just a fast you know kind of a rinse where you're just putting a little bit of water down and you're pulling it right back up just to to kind of rinse out any um, anything that might be left from a coffee spill out of the carpet just to be 100 percent thorough in what we're doing here today now um, a little bit of encouragement for you guys who are looking at starting a carpet cleaning business um, I went to I, I saw that the post that someone put on Facebook about you know is this a bad time to get into the carpet cleaning business with it as saturated as it is and I was kind of brought it up to my uh, my supplier and we were talking earlier this morning and um, come to find out you know I personally I would say no I'd say that there's more than enough carpets for everybody to clean I mean I'm I'm slammed um, every carpet cleaner that I come in contact with lately has been absolutely slammed uh, and, and the numbers statistically I believe it's in every any city the numbers are kind of similar or about the same it said only about 10 to 14 percent of all the carpets are actually cleaned every year so you know 10 to 14 percent really it, you know that has to do with some people only have their carpets clean once every three years or once every year or once every 10 years or whatever so I mean that's a reason for those a lot of those numbers but there are so many carpets that 
if every carpet cleaner was working 100% all day long cleaning carpets, there's no way that they would be able to clean all the carpets in a given city. I mean, it's really, there's that many carpets. Because you got to think about it. Look at all the new construction that's been going up yet lately. Especially with the economy turning the way it is. There's all this new construction. There's all these new carpets going in. There's always old carpets being ripped out, being remodeled, replaced, blah, blah, blah. I mean, sure, yeah, there's a lot more hard surfaces and hardwood floors and laminate and all that stuff going in. But carpet is going in practically at the same speed. So, you know, new people are joining the carpet cleaning industry and other people are getting out because they're sick and tired or they're so cheap that they go out of business and you come back, you come in as a... a a quality um, option or selection choice for the customer who was looking at a rug doctor. And I've been looking at rug doctors and why do people go that route? And I'm kind of convinced that the rug doctor crowd wouldn't necessarily even go with a professional carpet cleaner regardless of how cheap you are unless you're actually less than the cost of a rug doctor rental. I think that's the only the only scenario in which they would actually go with you. Um, it doesn't make sense to me, but, you know, and then you, you got to factor in things like the, the cost of housing. I think that's a huge, huge factor into what you can charge for your fabric cleaning is the cost of housing. So areas of the country that have uh, lesser housing cost, there's potentially, you know, more they potentially have more disposable income that they can use for professional services um where i live it's literally or it was last year i believe it was the second fastest growing e economical area or economy in the in the u.s so you know when you when you have things moving that fast nobody really has money to do anything so you, you gotta you can't just put your prices way up there they, they've got to be reasonable so that you know and and there are the high end who don't ask questions and they just hire you straight off the back you know straight off the bat and even while I was cleaning the church here oddly enough I got a call to do an estimate at another church that's literally maybe three blocks from here so um I, I just found that very interesting. I came to work, and I'm just going to work here until I'm done, and I'm already getting calls for other churches in the area wanting bids on carpet cleaning. So um, I, I spoke to the pastor or whatever of the church over there, and it sounds like it's, it's a done deal, especially when you connect with the person. And, you know, across from the, the, the Clackamas High School and I talk about, oh yeah, I was the last class that went through there before they moved to the new location and turned to find out that his daughter um, what, you know, graduated from Clackamas High School as well, um, but she actually graduated from the, from the newer location. So just having that connection and small talk, you know, and, and, and all that, you know, that really says a lot to your your customer and makes them feel comfortable with you so yeah yeah it's all about the rapport and it's all about how you relate to the customer and how they see you so paint yourself a positive image and it, that will take you a long long way hey we cleaned this entry area up here about a year ago and i'm just kind of coming back to take a look at how things look and they still look really good um in here it still looks good um there were some issues with with stuff leaking from the ceiling up above and so there were some huge water stains and it looks like there might be a little bit but it wasn't it's not nearly what it was i think um the doing a bonnet cleaning on it you know was enough to sort of like cleaning and drying super fast i mean the the end cap on water stains works really good most of the time except for when there's all kinds of sediments and stuff on the roof that are sitting in there then it kind of needs to be extracted because you're not going to be pulling much of that ph nasty stuff out of the carpets with a pad so 
But yeah, this, this all looks really good. So I think we're just going to be cleaning that one room. So here you have a uh, fully hybrid carpet cleaning. We went through, we scrubbed real good. And then we went back and we did a quick steam out. Um, we've only gone through about maybe 40% of this room, but wanted to kind of show the contrast between here and here. And we're also going back through and we're looking for uh, coffee stains that we may have missed. Um, we got a couple out already. I mean, light ones like that just come right out with a, uh, a good, uh, good rinse. And these carpets have probably not been this clean since they've been installed, so they look really, really good. And what, on the, what else do I want to say about this? Um, did a residential job, actually a few, doing this exact same process. And you, you can get like up to 75, 80 cents a square foot on doing this sort of rigorous routine. Um, and it looks very good. Of course, it's uh, two to three times the work of a normal cleaning, but I think it looks two to three times better than just going over it with a bonnet pad or or those LP machines or whatever those things are called, OP machines. I don't even know what they st OP stands for. All I know is that it's a pad and it vibrates on the carpets and it tickles them and everybody's like hee 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 look at me isn't this so wonderful the carpets aren't wet and the dirt is all gone and then you go back with a steam clean later on and you realize that all the water is pretty much all dark brown and black um, so yeah it's a tool it's a tool pick and choose the right tool for the job hey Remember that big cake spot that was over here? Chocolate frosting and whatever else was all caked all over. Neither do I. I don't even know where it was. But it all came right up. And it looks just as beautiful as all the other carpets. Yeah, <laughs> probably never been washed clean before. Um, we're giving it a good steaming right now. And that is pretty filthy. Um, and the carpets actually look really, really nice right now. They're nice and bright. I'll, I'll give you a, a preview of them here in a little bit. I'm going to finish cleaning it up. Probably got about another 20% uh, to go or so. Then we'll wrap things up and give uh, a couple estimates here. Alright, so this has got to be like a god ordained moment because this looks absolutely beautiful. Absolutely awesome with the way the sun is shining through the, the windows like that. The carpets are, actually, are absolutely uh, brilliant blue. Um, you saw how dark the water is. We just got all that build up, build up and build up and build up off of the, the carpeting. Um, we have encapped this a couple times. I know it looks great, but with encapsulation, um, it really needs a uh, steam cleaning in the interval intervals of encapsulation as well because the encapsulation solution will eventually build up and build up and build up and most vacuum cleaners do not have the capability to sufficiently uh, pick this stuff up off the carpeting or the ground so uh, I think you know this, this is, looks absolutely beautiful we uh, it was huge amounts of coffee stains all over the place and right now it looks like the carpets have just been laid down so um, we're going to work our way out the back now.